Shalom everybody, hope you're doing well today. Welcome to Ahava Moments with you. Yes. <laughs> we're so glad to be with you today and to be able to share. And uh, today we're going to talk about expectations. Expectations. So we all have expectations in our life. Mm -hmm. uh, some people have, if you're a career person, you have your expectations from your bosses Climbing at work. The ladder, yes. uh, if you're a married person or a person in a relationship, you have expectations of your spouse. Mm -hmm. um, we, even when we are part of a church body, there's expectations there. Yes, sir. There. And so uh, the expectations are something that we deal with on a continuous basis. But I have a scripture out of Ephesians that we're going to try to base this off. Now, uh, mind you, we don't use a script, and uh, so we may go down a bunny trail here or there, but we try to we try to rein it back in. Uh, Keeps but it we're, lively, we're right? just we're just speaking from our hearts. We're speaking from our experience over our lifetime. Uh, you know, Steve has been walking with the Lord a long time. Uh, I'm not as long, but it's uh, I've been in ministry. This this coming year will be uh, 2023. Will be 20 years in ministry. Right. So. Uh, you know, it's a, it's been a, it's been a bit, <laughs> as they say here in the south. So, uh, but out of on Ephesians, it's uh, chapter four. It starts with verse eleven, and I'm reading from the complete Jewish Bible. Furthermore, he gave some as emissaries, some as prophets, some as proclaimers of the good news, and some as shepherds and teachers. Their task is to equip God's people for the work of service that builds the body of Messiah until we all arrive at the unity implied by trusting and knowing the Son of God at full manhood at a standard of maturity set by Messiah's perfection. So as we walk our walk, we're trying to be more like Messiah every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we do this as, as He expects us to. He expects us to, to be a functional part of his body, That's right. isn't it? Each one of us. And expectations can is a is a a double-edged sword. You know, uh, it can grow you or it can it can hurt you. It it can be something that keeps you back. Um, you know, the word sin in itself is is an old archery term, and uh, the the it's basically missing the mark. Hmm. You know, we, we, we miss the mark. And sometimes we do, uh, when people have expectations of us, we miss the mark. And uh, we, we don't arise to the fullness of what uh, was expected of us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and it, can be, it can be harmful to a relationship. And, uh, but we are to be more like Messiah each day as we walk. And I think that that's the most important thing that we can do is to to walk with him and to be like him to emulate him in all that he did and all that he said and keeping uh keeping the word of the uh, scripture on your mind and in your heart and pondering uh things so that we are ex giving example of the fruits of the spirit mm -hmm. so, so yeah, there's it? yeah there's uh the expectations expectations can go both ways. Right. We can expect things from others, and they can expect items, stuff from us. I know with uh, walking down the path of life that we, that I have, we will will expect those things from leaders that at times they just can't fulfill. They may have made a promise to us, or or we thought yeah. they made a promise yeah. to us, or we were expecting them to do something for us. They had no idea that we were looking to them to do that. Correct, correct. And so when that doesn't get fulfilled, when what they said or we, we thought they said doesn't happen, right. it hurts us. Yes. And we want to lash back at them. We want to turn away. We want to forget, hey, if you're no, more, no longer my friend, my leader, because you didn't fulfill that expectation that I had put on them. Right, right. Uh, and that's wrong on our part. Yep. If they haven't told us that they were going to do something, then we shouldn't expect them to do that. Absolutely. And, and it works the other way too, when people are expecting something from us, whether it's implied or thought of, 
and it doesn't get fulfilled by them or in their heart it doesn't get fulfilled by us performing that which they thought we were going to do right then it uh, it shakes up the relationship a bit yeah well relationships are not necessarily easy anytime no. you know there's always uh, always can be uh, you know some tensions in relationships uh, especially with people I mean we're all we're all human we all have our our quirks and our mm -hmm. idiosyncrasies um, you know I, I always say this is that if we were all the same the world would be a pretty boring place you know and, uh, and, that, that, and that's true to an extent uh, you know we have to uh, we are salt of the earth we are not uh, all cookie cutters uh, we're not all to be the exact same. We all have different callings and giftings. And in the scripture, it even talks about our callings and giftings. Now, it says emissaries, but uh, the word that's used in scripture common, commonly is apostles, isn't right. it? Yeah. Yeah. And then prophets, uh, you know, evangelists and, and preachers and, and, uh, teachers. and teachers and, and the past pastors and shepherds, right? Because mm -hmm. that's a past, you know, pastoral word is the, right. is the pastoral gift is for her shepherds. Now shepherds generally lead a flock, and uh, you know, uh, pastors shouldn't be beating the sheep. You know, that's, there's, there's, there's no, that's one of the things. It's time. not generally a good thing if you're beating the sheep. You know, uh, now you do have to bring correction at times, mm -hmm. and you know, if it's a, if it's something that's that's hard. But uh, you know, uh, pastoring is, is can be a lonely a lonely job, and mm -hmm. uh, as well as being an, an apostle. Um, you know, but I think for apostleship, there is some very set out requirements scripturally for apostles. Uh, but we have expectations of those around us. Uh, we have expectations of our families and members of our families. And, and when they fall short, it can, it can be a, a, a time of hurt. Um, but it should be where we try to maintain the bond of the unity of peace. And we've talked about that in other videos where you know, we have to have this love for the brethren. And if we love one another, and, mm -hmm. and it says, in, in, uh, Paul says, you know, love conquers all. Well, it does. Yeah. It, it, and it, it covers over a whole lot of evil that can happen. If you, if you truly love your brother or sister, it's, it's easier to forgive and, and walk away from things. What? I have a question for you. Sure. Have you ever expected something from God and it didn't happen? Oh, yeah. Like what? Like what? Oh, I tried to plant a church. Okay. What happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, you really want to know? <laughs> uh, I'll give you three minutes. All right. Well, I was, uh, this is back some years ago, about 2000, uh, uh, 2005, 2006. Um, I moved to North Carolina to start a church. That's what I felt that from I was. From Michigan, From right? Michigan, yeah. And so I left my family and left uh, all my friends and left my men's group, uh, everything behind. Uh, and it was just me and my daughter came down here. I, I found a job and, and uh, really felt like that's what the Lord wanted us to do. So I tried to plant a church in Belmont, North Carolina uh, on Main Street. I rented a little room and I had a gentleman that was going to be my associate pastor, uh, a friend that I'd met. And, uh, uh, about a week before the the church was due to open, I made a little sign to put out in front of the church to let everybody, because it was on Main Street. I figured everybody's going to see this. It's right on Main Street, right? So about a week, I put I went down and put the little sign down there. And, and uh, the next time I went down, uh, you know, about a week before the, the, we were to have our first service, and uh, there's barricades on the Main Street, and nobody could see my sign, you know. And here the... It, what happened, there was a sinkhole right in front of the building in the middle of the street and they blocked Main Street. Well, you were me. expecting something. I was expecting the church to grow. Okay, so so it didn't end there. You know, I figured, well, I'll just take this church to my house and I'll have it in my the house. house church. My house church, you know, yeah. Well, I already had some people coming. Okay. So, uh, you know, so I, I we started worshiping in our house. We had, a, had it there a few weeks. I get a letter in the mail from my <laughs> landlord. Oh, by the way, we sold the house. You need to move. <laughs> Thirty days. So you know what I did for the last service? No. I got the people. I got the people for that had come for the church, and we got my car because it was just a small group at that point. We got my car and we drove down to T2K, 
to South, Bru Carolina. South Carolina to Brewster's ice cream. <laughs> and we had ice cream for the last thing because I had to move to an apartment. I didn't have room. So to what do you do when you get disappointed? You go disappointed. Get some ice cream. I, I, get was, some ice cream. I tell you what, my face was so long I looked like a mule <laughs> sucking a golf ball through a garden hose. I mean, it was it was bad. It was uh, you know, and you think that the Lord just left you. And, uh, and truthfully, he did what he said to you me. You were called to do that, right? Well, I, I thought so. Sure. I thought so, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes we, we, you know, assume part of your calling is to do this. And the Lord said to me, he says, why do you kick against the fence? I think you told Paul that too. <laughs> and uh, I said, Lord, I didn't know there was a fence. Wow. And then, a, then it was a, f a little while later. He gave me a dream. I saw this this crocodile hunter, a guy. You know, his it was an episode where he had this dog since he was like a young kid. So this dog must have been like 15, 20 years old, mm -hmm. very old dog. And he was just sobbing and crying because his dog was passing away. Mm -hmm. Well, the Lord gave me a dream, and it was. Steve Irwin's dog and I am just tore up. I'm the same way. I'm crying over this dog because I do have a, a soft spot for animals. Oh, and, yeah. and, and uh, you know, we should say him right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, it, yes, we do. We have we have a, we have a dog and a cat and you know four dogs. And, no, three yeah, dogs, three four dogs, three dogs, four cats. Uh, we had five cats a week ago. We had one that was rescued to a new home. Right. So because I said no more, no more animals. <laughs> uh, but anyways, and how many geckos? I've got some geckos too. I just saw so, them. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyhow, uh, in this dream, I'm dreaming and. Uh, I, I, here's, a, here's this dog, Steve Irwin's dog, and it's, and it's passing away. And I'm just crying like a baby. And the Lord said to me in that dream, so why are you crying over this, this dog? It's, it's not your dog. Why are you so upset over this dog? And what, what the Lord let me know is that I had the expectations that I was to plant a church because that was an expectation that my pastor, sure. who had passed away at this point, mm -hmm. had put on me to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, because we are to go out and grow, make disciples, and we're supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. the, the problem is, is that sometimes we get ahead of the Lord. Timing and, is always and, important. And timing is, is so important. But it's also, you have to be very, very certain. When you, when you step out to do something in a, in a work for the Lord, you have to be very certain. And you don't, don't assume things. Uh, you know, you need, to, you need to be very clear. Now, uh, subsequently, what happened is my ministry changed. My, I was not ready yet for the ministry that the Lord had set in front of me. Um, at that time, I was not, the, ch the church that I was, was with was not necessarily Messianic. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the Lord had to bring me to a place where I had more messianic understanding. So, um, I consider myself a messianic faith person, mm -hmm. uh, or, you know, which is, is Christian. You believe in Messiah Yeshua, sure. but it's the, the, the way you come at it is a little different and you're looking at things more through a, a Jewish perspective than you are a Christian perspective. But well, I have an expectation. Do you? I did. You did. Yeah. <laughs> I had been working for three ministries for a total of 24 years as administrator, finance man, and probably the 22nd, 23rd year, I was wanting something else. So I started praying. I said, Lord, I want my own vineyard. And I've been laboring in these guys, three of them, for the past 24 years. Can I not have my own? And that time came in November of, I believe it was 20. 2009. Mm -hmm. I just felt now is the time, so I gave my six month notice at the last. Six time. months, man. I you like, can't even I, get people to give you two weeks anymore. <laughs> I, I like to give them as much time as I can to prepare because I was doing a, an important job. Important job, yeah. You know, being the head of those ministries in some capacity. Um, and so I gave my six month notice, and in April of 2010, I, we formed my wife and I, Law for His People. Yeah. And I was planning on leaving that one at the end of June, June 30th, which would be tomorrow. Right. right yeah. <laughs> We're recording this on June 29th, 2022. Yeah. And then I left. I had left $70,000 a year, annual salary, 
four days or four weeks of vacation, medical insurance paid for. And I thought, okay, Lord, I'm stepping out. And I did. I left. No income that I could assure my wife I was, was going to come in. Right, right. She continued with her job at uh, a daycare, 20, 20, 30 hours a week. And I was assuming that, okay, we got people who should know what I'm doing. They, they should be covering me, helping me, because I was going to minister. I was going to start this new ministry and all would be great. <laughs> expectations. Yeah, expectations. Didn't quite it, happen. It, it didn't quite grow that fast. I could show you on our 2010 income tax that my personal income was 11000 that year. I ended up just getting a job here and there, and Lori goes, after a couple months of frustration, I believe, she goes, well, why don't you just go work in McDonald's? Yeah. I go, Lord, this is not what right. I was expecting from right. you. I thought you would provide, uh, and you're just not keeping your end of the deal up. Yes. Yeah. But it was a walk of faith, and through that, our mortgage never got, um, always got paid, never left up, missed a payment. We had two car payments, those got paid, and as of last year, our house was paid off. Yeah. We have no debt. And the Lord did provide. He yeah. was faithful. And He met the expectations that He had, had put on our hearts. Um, sometimes they don't come, fulfillment, in the time you think right. they should. Right. And sometimes that walk isn't as cozy and rose gardenish as you want it to be. Absolutely. But it's all in preparation yeah. for what He has for us. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's never late. He's always on on time. But it's it's easy. Well, whose time are you talking it's, about? It's it's his time. It's not your. It's not necessarily your time clock. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are those people that you know have come to serve in other ministries for a season, and then they step up and they are able to go out uh, in their own. But I believe right now um, we are in a season where it's it's tough for ministers. It's sure. tough to sure. it's tough to start a new work. Um, you know, but you still have to have expectations right. of the Lord. You know, you know? And in many ways, the Lord doesn't care about your current situation in the world, the economy. He's not looking at that. Right. Because he knows the big picture. He has the eternity in place. And if he's calling you, if he's calling us to step out further in faith, it's because he knows that he will be there. Yep. He will provide. He's not a liar. Yep. He's not one who's going to say, I'm going to tease you with this, uh, but when you get so far, then I'm going to yank the rug from under you. Right, right. He is not that type of guy. Yep, He's absolutely. not that type of God. He is God yeah. Almighty. Yeah, He is Almighty. He's all sufficient. You know, He's yeah. He's uh, Jehovah Nissi, your banner that goes before you. Yes. You know, He He is He is everything, and uh, His His thoughts towards you are are for good. Absolutely. And that that He, he has no harm for you. But it, it's easy to assume things, mm -hmm. and assumption is where you get in trouble with expectations. Mm -hmm. If you're assuming that something's going to go just perfect or a certain specific way, that may not be the plan that he has for you. He may need to, to teach you some things, you know. And, and uh, I can remember when I first started in ministry in, in Michigan, um, I was serving with a youth group. Okay. And... Uh, uh, so how my serving with the youth group was kind of like I used to do at the men's ministry. I would I would bring the kids food. Well, what it what I realized food about, always brings yeah, people, right? Yeah, for, <laughs> food always does. You know, if you're breaking bread together, it's, it, it, in it case helps. you ask, come to your place, <laughs> have a good meal. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> that's all we ask. Yeah, it, it, just, it just needs to be edible. And, uh, so, you know, that's, that's 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 pretty much it. Yeah, being but raised it, with eight kids, if you don't eat it, your sister yeah, would. Yeah, the uh, uh, the kids. I was doing potato chip and pops and that for the snacks, you know, and, yeah. and what I realized is that the kids were coming, they were getting all this sugary stuff and they were really not having a meal before their parents dropped them off. Mm -hmm. So it morphed into making sloppy joes and submarine sandwiches and hot dogs and, and really giving the kids a substantial yeah. meal rather than just complete junk, you know. And so uh, after about a few months of doing that, I wasn't getting a chance to preach. You know, and so I, I I went to Pastor Ken and I went to his office and said, I said, Ken, this isn't working out. 
you know, and Ken says, not to your expectations. Yeah, not to my expectations. I was expecting to preach because I thought at that time that ministry was a, a you know, a, a good preaching and a little bit of the Holy Spirit and a, and an altar sure. call and bang, and it was done. Yeah, and that's not like necessarily else. the way it goes, right? And so uh, I says to Ken, I says, you know, I said, this isn't working out. I'm not getting to share, share the word of the Lord with anybody. And he, and he looks at me, he says, you got a case of stinking thinking. <laughs> I says, what? <laughs> you know, got a little, he started to get a little up into you. Know? He's like, you got a case of stinking thinking. And I said, well, what do you mean? You know, well, I don't understand what you're trying to say. And, and I could have, I could have just got up and walked out, you know, but I didn't. And uh, he, he explained to himself, he says, you know, he says, uh, them kids, he says, they're, he says, I see them going downstairs and they're sitting on the steps there and they're talking to you while you're fixing those meals. He says, uh, yeah, he says, what are they telling you? What are they talking to you about? And I said, well, you know, I give an example of one young man who was, grandfather was getting close to passing away and uh, he was having questions about whether his grandfather was going to go to heaven, uh, you know, you know, if he's going to go, if he's going to mm -hmm. see him in heaven and those kind of things, which are important, important uh, questions. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, uh, but he was looking to me to be, to be example and, to, yes. and to, to answer some of these questions. So, and I would share what the Lord put on my heart with him. And, and, uh, and Pastor Ken looked at me and he says, you know, Dave, he says, he says, those kids didn't tell me that. Mm -hmm. He says, they never said a thing about that. And you're ministering, you just got to yeah. change your yeah. thinking because ministry isn't what you think it is. Yeah. And so uh, I've tried to avoid a case of stinking thinking ever since. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, a blessed memory, Ken Willett is, and uh, he, he was a good pastor, but he mm -hmm. spent a lot of time pouring into my life. And, uh, and, hit, and, and to, to not be able to plan you know, a well, church. He wasn't preaching to 3,000 in a service? No, he wasn't. You know what, uh, when I started that ministry, with the ministry at that time, the church had went through a split and uh, there was almost more people on the worship team stage the first time I went there than there was in the, in the congregation. Yeah. And, but the Lord brought people back and uh, the church grew um, and uh, I, I can honestly say that I was very blessed to be able to serve with, serve the Lord with yes. those people in that place. And they partnered with us. Um, you know, there's, there's an unwritten thing in church that says it's an 80-20 rule. That 80% you kind of just are there and then 20% do all the work. Well, we had 70% of the congregation doing some sort of ministry in oh, our wow. little church. So sure. we were very, very blessed. And, uh, uh, I, you know, it, it's, it's, it's an amazing thing to uh, see the Lord work mm -hmm. in those situations. Mm -hmm. So we want to pray for you. Yes. I know there's several of you who have expectations that haven't come yet. Uh, been fulfilled that you're still looking you're still waiting sometimes you've been waiting for years I understand that completely but there is a time that the Lord has appointed to meet every expe expectation that he has put in yes. your heart every desire of your heart that he put there he will bring about because he knows and he's just waiting for that time so let's pray yes. Father give thanks Lord that you are a God of true fulfillment that you do not tease us, you do not cause us to uh, chase after you, and then when we catch up with you, you say, ah, too bad.